Hello, fellow risk takers, and welcome to my worst investment ever. Stories of loss to keep you winning. In our community, we know that to win in investing, you must take risk, but to win big, you've got to reduce it. This episode is sponsored by Ace Dots Academy, which offers online courses that help investors, aspiring professionals, business leaders, and even beginners to improve the finances of their lives and their businesses. Go to myworstinvestmentever.com right now to claim your discount on the course that suits you most. Fellow risk takers, this is your worst podcast host, Andrew Stotts, and I'm here with featured guests, Natalia Bihovsky. Natalia, are you ready to rock? I'm ready when you are. All right. So let me introduce you to the audience. At the age of 29 and at the peak, of her corporate career and deep unhappiness. Dr. Natalia Bihovsky quit her job and started from scratch. She took a nine month sabbatical during which she changed the way she thinks, speaks, and acts. From that moment, she committed to design her purposeful dream life and founded Think Natalia. Her obsession is coach salting people who have left the corporate rat race to do their own thing. These people all have one thing in common. They want to build an international, sustainable, and purposeful thought leadership personal brand on LinkedIn. They want to use that brand to become the voice of their niche, get more clients, and have a positive impact on the world. She started as a social scientist, turned into a doctor of philosophy, a LinkedIn marketing unicorn, a Forbes Coaches Council member, a LinkedIn learning author, and the Middle East leading edutainer. Natalia, take a minute and fill in any further tidbits about your life. Any further tidbits? I'm originally from Germany. I live in the United Arab Emirates in Dubai. I'm here since 2008 for a very long time. I enjoy the expat life and I absolutely love great food, long walks, and everything that glitters. Fantastic. And I, I wanted to ask you a couple of questions because I know a lot of our listeners are on LinkedIn and they're thinking about, you know, how do I get more out of LinkedIn? And, you know, is this all I can get out of LinkedIn? And is it too late to, you know, put more effort into LinkedIn? I'm just curious if you could kind of give a, a big picture perspective on the opportunities on LinkedIn. Absolutely. So LinkedIn at the moment is a phenomenal business tool. I see it as an opportunity to generate leads, to spread your message, to network, to learn new things, to meet like-minded people, to grow your brand, grow your personal brand, to learn new things, to see what's trending. So LinkedIn is full of opportunities. And especially nowadays, as we're going through this, let's call it global current situation. It is the number one online networking tool or platform. We don't have real life events or get togethers. So see it as the place where you go if you wanna do business. And if you don't have an optimized profile yet that tells your story that looks like a landing page, if you don't create content at least twice or three times per week. If you don't expand your network almost on a daily basis, if you don't engage with other people's content, then of course you don't get the results that you can have. But as always, start with one thing and then invest a little bit of love and time and energy and eventually you're going to get there. Fantastic. And you know, one of the things that you know, kind of knocked me back when I read your about section was this uh, sentence. If you don't get leads, profile visits, contact requests, a lot of engagement on your posts, speaking inquiries, podcast interviews, and business opportunities on LinkedIn on a daily basis, you must be doing something wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's true. All of that what a statement. is possible. Yeah, that's what, that, these are the results my clients get. These are the results that I get. And again, if you don't receive that, then there must be something deeply wrong with your LinkedIn profile and most probably also with your mindset. Maybe you're still living in this scarcity thing. Mm. Okay. And so let's ask one last question before we get into the big question of the day. And that is, uh, 
if somebody works with you and they say, gosh, I need that, I want that, generally, what are they, what are they gonna learn from you? What is it about you that you will bring to them so that they get an idea? And then after that, ladies and gentlemen, go to her LinkedIn profile. <laughs> so as you mentioned in the introduction, people who come to me, they don't have a clear message. Their voice is not sharp enough. Maybe they aren't seen as the go-to expert in their niche yet. And because they are not showing the true color or because they pos don't position themselves in a clear way, they don't know what, what they're great at, who their target audience is, et cetera. So the whole marketing communication on LinkedIn is all over the place. And that's the reason why they don't get the results that they want. And the results are different. Some people want more visibility. Some people want more engagement. Some people want to double the amount of leads. Some people want to reach a certain specific uh, monthly revenue. Some people just want to make a difference and they want to share all of their wisdom that they've gained over the last 20, 30 years with the world. So that's what I help them with. Depending on what their goal is, we take them as a brand, their content, their communication, and basically set it on fire and then turn them into unicorns as well so that they fly on LinkedIn. On fire. All right. Well, I love that. Ladies and gentlemen, you can go to the show notes. If you can't find her on LinkedIn, go to the show notes and I'll have a link to her LinkedIn. And now it's time to share your worst investment ever. And since no one ever goes into their worst investment thinking it will be, tell us a bit about the circumstances leading up to it and then tell us your story. So I invested tons of time, energy, nerves, life force, resources into being or playing a role that was not mine. I used to be an ex-people pleaser, everybody's darling. And until the age of 29, that worked out fine. It was amazing. I finished my studies. I made my parents proud. I used to be a competitive athlete, so I got a lot of awards. And I worked myself up the, the success and career ladder. And people always said, wow, you're so successful. You must be so happy. Oh, I wish I could be a little bit like you. So on the outside, everything looked phenomenal and fantastic. And I, when you looked at my CV, Phenomenal. I was literally living for my CV. I think that's the best way <laughs> how to put it. And again, that made sense until the age of 29. But I saw the 30 appearing on the horizon. And for some reason, I, I really started panicking. I didn't feel good. I was worrying because when I was a teenager, I kind of made a commitment to myself. I knew how I want to feel. I knew who I want to be at the age of 30. And when I looked at that persona on the outside and how people saw me, fine. But when I looked deep down inside, I thought I am literally a waste of everything. I found myself stupid, hedonistic. I didn't perceive myself as successful. I wasn't happy. I was consuming too much. I was eating crap, food. I was, I don't know, I was really a mess. And I realized that this goes literally nowhere. So, but I was a little bit scared. I don't know, should I change? What should I change? Is this just life? Is this the way how I'm supposed to live? Is this what I deserve? All of these big questions. And life or karma or the universe or God or however you call that, that entity in the end realized that little one doesn't get it. So we need to hit her extra hard. So what happened is I went through severe pain and it you know, appeared every month and then it appeared twice per month and I ended up in hospital and the doctors tested everything. They said, we don't know what it is, but if you continue like that, it's going to get chronic. And you know what happens after that? You're very young. Hmm, maybe you're creating this on your own. And I thought, seriously, what me creating on my own? How's that even possible? And at a certain stage, I, it must have been again a Thursday evening or a Friday evening, and people would be going out and partying. And I ended up in the hospital with severe pain. And this is when I literally just, it just realized I can't, I, I can't do it anymore. 
And although I'm not a religious person, I looked up and I said, God, universe, Allah, whoever is up there, help me. I just can't do it anymore. I don't think that I deserve to live in such a terrible way. I don't want to go through this emotional pain, through this physical pain. I'm literally surviving. I'm crawling on the floor. I'm sorry that I didn't believe in you, but just, or I kind of broke up with you when I was 18, but maybe you give me a sign or something. And um, I got a sign. I, a few days later, I, I, I learned about the idea of Gandhi, be the change you wish to see in the world. And yes, the pain that you're going through is self-created. So this is when I had a lot of conversations with my friends, with my mentors, with my parents, and they all said, you know what, do it. Quit your job, go on a sabbatical. And during that sabbatical, please start doing your homework. Figure out what is happiness for you? What is success for you? What does money mean? What does time mean? How do you want to work? How do you want to live? With whom do you want to work? What if everything you ever thought was an illusion or a lie? And that's exactly what I did. And then I created a long list of all the things I wanted to do. And I stumbled myself up. I failed myself up to my dream life and career of purpose. And I understood that your dream job only exists when you create it, at least in my reality and my perception. And if you believe that you have what it takes, just go for it. So tell us what lessons did you learn from this? I'm gonna call it a journey, a journey yeah. kind of crashing. You know, you were doing everything right. You know, you were a good kid. You did what's expected of you. You know, you tried to achieve, you set your goals and then it started crashing and it hit bottom. Yeah. And let's just look at that, you know, from that experience and the recovery from it, what did you learn? I believe that we are born in a way that we are very innocent and we're curious and we want to explore and we want to spend time with our loved ones and we want to have fun and we want to sing and we want to dance and we want to be naked. Yes, absolutely. And then we get socialized and then life kicks in and all of that. And You can't do I, that stuff. Exactly. Why are people going to say be, grow up, mature? And some people understand at a certain stage when they don't follow their, their heart or their soul or however you want to call that, that instance or that entity within yourself. Some people never get it. Some people understand it and it's never too late. But I do believe that if you realize that this part of you is communicating with you, learn to listen to it and go on that journey because I believe that life in the end is a journey where you go back to to who you truly are it is a journey to understand why you're here how you can contribute to the world because everybody is good at something and if you can design a lifestyle and a career and a business model around that reason why you're here and some people are here to paint to sing to be a great parent to help people with their finances as you do to help people with their with their art with their whatever it is be honest to yourself, even although you don't like it. And other people say, oh, you can't make a living from that. You can. And uh, then go out there, sharpen that skill, master it and share it with the world. And that's how you're going to live a healthy life, a balanced life. And that's how you're going to live a beautiful life without any regrets, especially on the last day when you're here on this planet, you'll realize, you know what? I made a lot of mistakes, but all in all, it was a fantastic journey. Now I'm ready to go whatever the next step is. Exactly. Um, well, let me share a couple of things that I think about when I was listening to your story. I was in Hong Kong a couple of years ago giving a, a speech about careers in finance. And so I had a lot of young people and I basically got off the stage and I went to the back of the room and a lot of young people came to ask me questions. But I remember one in particular and she said, you know, I'm, I'm a, I studied accounting, I want to do finance, but, you know, um, I heard that, you know, it's hard to make that transition. And, you know, what do you think? And I said, who told you that? And she said, I, I, I mean, I just heard that. Mm. From who? Who told you oh. that? Yeah, I just heard it. I said, well, then, you know, I said, I said, for my, my advice to you is don't listen to that. If what you want to do is to do finance. It isn't going to be easy. You know, you're going to transition from being an engineer or being an accountant or whatever it is that you're doing to that. 
not going to be easy, but if you want to do it, forget what other people say. And I think that, that that's one big you know, thing that you reminded me of is the idea is ultimately it's about your own satisfaction in your life and pursuing you know, the dreams that you have. And there's a lot of people that just flippantly say something like, oh, yeah, but it's kind of hard to make that. And they don't realize like how damaging that can be to a young person. So the first lesson is the idea of, um, you know, really just saying, if I want to do it, I'm going to do it. You got to set out your plan. You got to follow it. The second thing is people ask me, you know, how is it that you're so happy with the work that you do and the life that you've lived? And I said, well, I guess if they said, if you give me any advice, what one piece of advice, I say, quit, quit a lot. And they're like, what do you mean? I said, look, the fact is, is that in life, we understand the things that don't work much better than the things that might work. The things that might work are unknowns out there, but the things that don't work are very real today. And so the point is that when you identify something that's not working for you, a relationship, a job, or whatever, quit, you know, hurry up and quit before you get trapped in it. And of course, I'm not saying just to, you know, not think about, you know, other people around you and your circumstances. But the point is, is that if you want to have a better life, you have to leave some things behind. And that's the reason why a lot of people don't have a better life is because they don't have the ability, the guts, the determination, whatever it is, to leave things behind and quit. And so those are two things that you really reminded me of, which I just love because it just gets me charged up about how much potential there is in life. And I'll tell you one last story is that when my father, my father called me and he told me, he asked me if I could come help him take care of my mother. And my mother had had a stroke and she was in pretty bad shape uh, in a rehab hospital. So I flew back from Thailand to North Carolina and I basically, my dad and I went to see my mother. And then after that, my dad, I was like, dad, just, just relax. Let me take care of mom a bit here. So every day, you know, in the afternoon, I'd go see mom at the rehab place and then get her to bed. And she was in very, pretty bad shape. And it was getting worse. You know, I could see all the medicines and, you know, a lack of much activity. And I just was kind of fighting with the nurses and the doctors and all that. And then after one week, I came home from seeing my mom one night. And my dad had had a massive hemorrhage. And basically, I got him to the emergency room. And, you know, I don't, that was a great, in some ways, you could say it was a great day. He was 82. We had been on the golf course in the morning. We had had a coffee at Starbucks, at, you know, a, a, a breakfast break. And then we had lunch together. And he told me how much he loved my mom. And we had a beautiful day. And then he had the hemorrhage. And within about two weeks, he was gone. And, wow. And, you know, I don't feel sad because I got so much from my dad and we were together at the last days. But what I wanted to say out of this story was that when I decided, and my mom had asked me at one point, could you take care of me in Thailand? And I said, absolutely. So my sister and I and my mom worked on it together. And then I brought mom to, uh, through, through uh, uh, Munich airport from charlotte oh, yeah okay and it's funny because on lufthansa there was a, a a beautiful german stewardess and i was wearing a suit as mm -hmm. i often do when i travel and i was taking care of my mom she was i got her in the first class luckily and so she had like a bed nice. but i told the lady look every time that my mom she asked for anything just call me and i would get my mom would have she was she was having urinary tract problems and stuff so i would get her up out of her out of her uh chair go to the bathroom, you know, those tiny little bathrooms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would go and she'd sit down on the commode and I'd kneel down in front of her with a little cup and she had a catheter. So, you know, it was like, oh, okay, I'm yeah, emptying yeah. that. And then I get her back up and get her back in about six or eight times. And that's funny because I just finished my PhD in the area of finance, which is where I study. Yeah. And um, the, the, the stewardess said to me, she said at the end, towards the end of the flight, she looked at me, she said, are you a doctor? <laughs> and I, and I, and I thought to myself, Almost. yeah, so, I am. Yes, in fact, yeah. I just got my PhD. I'm just not exactly. a medical doctor. Yeah. The point is, when I brought my mom to Thailand, her condition was very difficult. Mm. But through concerted effort, through 
better nutrition through me, particularly studying about nutrition. Um, mm -hmm. I was able to get her off of medicines, get her to have great night's sleeps, not interrupt those nice. sleeps like happens at all these places and to start getting her heal. And now she's laughing and smiling and we're having fun in our lives together. Mm -hmm. But it makes you, what the message of this is, the potential is massive. If my 78 year old mother can get to 82 and improve in so many ways, and you listener are 25, 30 and going, oh, it's so hard. Get out there and make it happen. And today's you know, story will really inspire that. Anything you'd add to the, the comments that I made about your story? I mean, I think it's, and you know that better than I do. I think prob people have a, a fear or they don't like to change because they have invested so much. They have invested time. They have invested love. They have invested energy. They have invested money. They have invested whatever it is. And just stopping making this radical cotton, starting from scratch, they they see that as a too big of an, I don't know, as a challenge or whatever it is. But if you think about it, you will always invest and lose and learn and it's all interconnected. And if you don't risk things, if you don't take calculated risks, then you're going to live a boring, mediocre life. And for me, that's my biggest nightmare. <laughs> I was just talking with some of my interns that I have in Thailand and I was saying, you know, there's nothing wrong with kind of an average life. Not everybody is going to swing for the fences and be a star and all that, you know, but you've got to make your decision. Exactly. You know, you've what got you to make your decision. And then stick to it. Yep. And you remind me of what's called the sunk cost fallacy in the world of finance. And as you were explaining, you know, you invest time, you invested energy and all that. I'm sure there's plenty of listeners that have invested time and energy in relationships and they're thinking, Oh, but I put so much time and we've got so much together, but we can always break the sunk cost fallacy by asking this question, knowing what you know about this person or this situation now, which you didn't know when you first got into it, knowing what you know now, if this situation appeared before you, would you jump into it? If the answer is yes, then double down and make it great. Mm -hmm. But if the answer is no, it's time to quit beautifully said great <laughs> so everybody who listens to that get your stuff sorted out so let's go back in time to the time that you were kind of crashing you know before you made your recovery and think about this question based on what you learned from your story and what you continue to learn what one action would you recommend our listeners take to avoid suffering the same fate of just continuing to crash down Designing the time every day to have space and time for yourself and use that time to reflect and ask yourself what was great about today, what was terrible, terrible about today, where can I improve, what have I learned, what do I need to do to become one step better tomorrow and literally get a journal and a, a pen or a piece of paper and write it down design this space and time to reflect and that will make a big difference because if you don't then you will or the likeliness that you will turn into a zombie or as you said somebody who's rushing through red rays and and become a ping pong ball of what other people want and a passive victim of your circumstance is very high so if you want to be on top of the game understand that it's your game and that when you don't steer it when you don't reflect on it you're not going to win you will very likely end up supporting somebody in his or her dream getting them closer but your own goals and targets well they will be there somewhere on item number 395 on your to-do list and that's very sad because mm. as you said there's so much potential and if you decided to be somebody who's striving for greatness and who wants to be more than just this average nice person next door, then get your stuff done. Beautiful, beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, get your time, find your time and invest in yourself. Last question. What's your number one goal for the next 12 months? 
being more entertaining. So I have studied keynotes and, and, and storytelling and copywriting and all of that. So I think in this area, I'm pretty good. But I think that social media is, or the audience is demanding more humor and more entertainment. And I think that this kind of content is, is very, very, it's different and it is an art form. And it's also powerful when you work with other people. So I literally made it my number one thing. So over the next year, I wanna learn more about the, the, the art of stand-up comedy, about humor, about satire, about cracking jokes, about what is entertainment. I will also go back into dancing. I used to be a dancer. So I will play with all of these different art forms and pieces and wanna find a way how I can incorporate that into my business, my life, and my stage character, my personal brand to help even more people and to have more fun along the way. Because I realized that this part of me is really screaming, saying, I want more of this. Give me an outlet. So I'm like, okay, fine. Let me create it for you. Whatever that crazy voice inside of me is. Well, I can't wait to follow up in 12 months to hear where you are. That's exciting. Thanks. Well, listeners, there you have it, another story of loss to keep you winning. To remember to go to myworstinvestmentever.com to claim your discount on the course that excites you the most. Now, as we conclude, Natalia, I want to thank you again for coming on the show. And on behalf of Ace Dots Academy, I hereby award you alumni status for turning your worst investment ever into your best teaching moment. Do you have any parting words for the audience? Thank you so much for this opportunity. And one thing, one way to sum it up is to stop waiting for the perfect moment because perfection is an illusion. Start now. And I believe that flawsomeness, being flawsome, which is a mix between full of flaws and awesome, that's the goal. Beautiful. Start now. Be flawsome. Well, that's a wrap on another great story to help us create, grow, and most importantly, protect our well fellow risk takers. This is your worst podcast host, Andrew Stott, saying, I'll see you on the upside.